All right, so I haven't done a cafe talk in a while. Uh, the cafe talk was inspired by this romanticized vision of what it was like to be an impressionist painter. This idea that they would go out and they would paint and then come back and eat and drink in the cafes and argue about art and whatnot. Always wanted to do that, so I'm going to do it right here <laughs> since most of the cafes are closed. Anyway, uh, so today what I want to talk about is the importance of creative vision or your own creative voice. I think this is something that is difficult to teach and oftentimes, in fact, like art school or classes or workshops or whatever, can get in the way of the creative, your creative voice or developing your own voice or vision. Um, you know, there are certain rules that you need to learn, you know, about the craft in the beginning. And I think a lot of times for certain people that can be challenging, can be discouraging, and it can impede your progress towards developing your own voice because probably you end up painting less you're discouraged and what anyway i do remember also reading a biography of edward hopper and he talked about how it took 10 years for him to get art school out of his system to the point where he was painting in a more personal way what i look for in work is i don't necessarily look for finesse and maybe i did when i was starting out i could be dazzled by like you know somebody who had incredible skills I'm not anymore. Like I've, the more work I look at, the more I'm looking for a personal take on our human experience. You know, I'm looking for something that is uh, unique. I tend to look for things that are beautiful and hopeful. I mean, there's a lot of things that are, that's just my thing that I'm looking for. There's plenty of negative uh, things about, you know, that in this world and I, you know, I want to see something that makes me glad to be alive, you know, and to appreciate those beautiful moments and, and the beautiful things. So that's what I look for personally as far as, you know, in art. And I look for, a, like, you know, somebody's take on that, somebody's unique take on the beauty of this experience of living. And, and so um, I don't want to look at somebody who is emulating somebody else or imitating somebody else. I want to see who are you. Um, and that's a scary thing to figure out. You know, it's like self-discovery is always challenging and always, it is, is always um, can be frightening. And it's vulnerable too. Like, you know, the, how I was, you know, when I was talking about the, like painting out on the street, I think that's one of the things that's, people are horrified about putting themselves out in that, you know, painting in front of people and being vulnerable. They don't want their painting to look bad. They want, you know, they want it to be accepted by people or approved by people, you know, and that's something that's really difficult. Uh, that gets in the way too of, of, of developing your voice is wanting that approval. And I think that's the reason we imitate people. It's like, oh, you know, everybody loves Sargent. I'm going to imitate his work and then that way people love my work. All of these things get in the way of you figuring out who you are. And like I said, the most important thing to me, the thing that I really, that really inspires me is somebody who's doing it, who's, who's figured out their own vision and is, is, is doing their own thing. To me, that's courageous, you know? A lot of times, like, you know, people who don't know anything about art, the way they judge how good a painter is, is how close your painting looks to a photograph. I'm not saying that there isn't a certain skill involved in reproducing a photograph exactly, but to me it's more just tedious. It's a tedious uh, process of just reproduction. There's not, a, the human element is missing. In other words, the closer your painting looks like, the, the closer a painting looks to a photograph, the less of you is in it. So if you're somebody who struggles with technique, with drawing, whatever, the one advantage you have is your voice is in that work. You can't help it. You know, somebody who's got mad skills, you know, and has got lots of artistic ability, they don't have to be as vulnerable. You know, they can, it, it's almost like, I mean, they can imitate other people, they can do whatever, but the challenge for them is gonna be to find their voice. That's gonna be difficult, especially if they have success painting in a certain style or doing whatever, then it's even harder to try to figure out who you are. So if you are somebody who struggles with drawing and struggles with color and composition and all that stuff, you do have an advantage when it comes to discovering your own voice. I mean, I think Van Gogh's a perfect example of that. Probably the most popular painter that ever existed, most valuable paintings on planet Earth, and he struggled. 
You know, he struggled. He was not a natural and nobody appreciated the work at the time. So I think that that's something to remember. I think maybe that is why we, we have such a fond, uh, you know, place in our heart for Van Gogh is because he wasn't appreciated and at the, at the time during his life and thought of himself as a failure. And yet his work, you know, is now again, the most, probably the most popular paintings on the planet. So, all right, so that's it. Um, in other words, yeah, I want to see vulnerability in your work, which requires some self-reflection. Like, who are you? Who are you? How do you figure that out? All right, so here's what I think as far as figuring out your, who you are as a creative person. What I like to do is pick paintings from lots of different painters uh, and then try to analyze what it is I like about those paintings. What is it that I connect with in those paintings? Um, and really ask those questions and look at as much art as possible in person as well, you know, going to museums and, and looking online. We have incredible resources. So um, that's something that's important to do. And then just painting as much as possible. Um, that's, that's another part of that journey as well. So uh, I'd like to hear your guys' thoughts on developing your own vision. Uh, like I said, I feel like it's, to me, it's the most important thing. It's the thing I like the most in work. Uh, there are painters like Fairfield Porter who I love his work and yet his his drawing can be all wonky and but they're great paintings and they're so unique and if you saw Fairfield Porter you'd know it instantly you know there's a bunch of painters out there that are painting in this certain style like Jeremy Mann you know these cityscapes with smudges and this and that and half the time I don't know who's doing it because there's probably like a hundred painters out there that are painting in this certain style and I'm sure they're selling a ton of paintings. They will maybe for at least a little while, but it's a trend. It's a, it's, it, it doesn't look to me like, I'm not seeing the vulnerability. I'm not seeing the individuality. I'm not seeing individual voices. I'm seeing people imitating another artist, you know, and because they're good enough to do that. And then there maybe they'll sell paintings. So whatever, there's my little rant. <laughs> You know, put in the comments down below if you've got ideas on developing creative voice or if you think it's important, whatever. We're having a cafe discussion here, so argument and, and, and disagreement is fine, but uh, I want to hear what you guys think. Put it down below. If you'd like to see other videos and help support the channel, there's a Patreon link down below. I put videos like this on there all the time, and uh, so check it out. Uh, other than that, stay creative, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.